everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's AVST Academy webinar, CXE Auto Attendance Scheduling Made Easy. I'm Ann Rood with AVST Marketing, and our trainer this morning is Pat Haney, our training manager. And um, before I turn it over to Pat, I just want to let you know that um, we are recording this, so if you'd like to go back and uh, review any of the content, we'll make that available to you. And we will also have plenty of time for questions at the end. You're welcome to type those questions in at any time. And before I turn it over to Pat, actually, I'm going to have Matt Sawyer open us up. All right, thanks, Sam. Hi, so I just want to take a moment to um, acknowledge a couple of groups of people that um, had quite a bit of involvement in the um, design and uh, development process related to the stuff that you're about to see today. Um, the first group of people that I'd like to acknowledge is the Customer Advisory Council. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, the Customer Advisory Council is a group of, um, of our customers that volunteer their time to help provide feedback to AVST on things like content for these types of um, trainings. And they participate in the design process. So as we, as we put together um, proposals and prototypes for um, uh, changes that we make to the product, uh, they look at those, provide feedback, and things like that. And so I'd like to thank them for their involvement with providing feedback on um, the scheduling stuff that you're going to see here shortly. The other group I'd like to thank is um, there was a number of customers that provided um, their actual data from their systems that, what, that we used for analysis and input into the design process, and we were able to test with that. And that was, um, you know, very valuable in the development um, process as we were able to identify some some ways that people use Schedule Express and scheduling that we may have otherwise missed. So I just want to thank those people that provided um, their data from their from their actual production systems that we were able to uh, use and test with. And so um, the last thing I want to just say is that um, there will be other opportunities to participate in the design process of things. We have some uh, work coming up um, here pretty quickly. Um, with regards to uh, moving to web-based admin, and we'll be looking for volunteers in addition to the Customer Advisory Council uh, to provide feedback on that. Um, so I'll, I'll um, um, post a call for volunteers to the, uh, to the uh, end user forum here in the not too distant future. So if, you, if that's of interest to you, then please be on the lookout for that. Okay, having said that, I'll turn things over to Beth. Starting in 8.6, that's the new release that we currently have out, they completely, we completely changed how the routing works um, from the way it used to work. So in the older days, if you wanted to have departmental type automated attendant routing, then you would have to use something like Schedule Express. Um, so what they do is, or what we did is, we got, uh, put all that functionality into version 8.60. So let's take a look at what it looked like before. <clears throat> Back in 8.5 and below, basically all CX and Call Express systems, the, the way routing used to happen was that you would group all your ports or lines into groups and then assign them to an answer mode table. And it, the routing was done based on a schedule entry, like time and date, a group of ports, a physical group of ports, and then sent to a call processor. And that a that call processor would either have your day or your night greeting. You needed separate um, entries in the ta scheduling table in order to do this. Now, if you wanted to route something like a departmental automated attendant, you could use the call routing table and then route calls based on a phantom extension, DNS digits, or a trunk group, or trunk number if the, the PBX supported that. However, <clears throat> as a trick, or, or unfortunately, um, that was those entries in the call routing table were dependent on the answer mode entry in order to route the call to that department. So it became kind of, kind of cumbersome if you had different uh, start days and times for different departments. Um, and that's where that where Schedule Express came into play. Schedule Express, um, if you're not familiar with it, is a, a secondary application that we ship with our DVD. And what you do is you go to a call processor, or the answer mode would would send a call to a call processor, or you would use ESP, which is a uh, a 
uh, it's called extension specific routing. It's used to uh, turn over control of a subscriber mailbox over to a call processor. Well, you would run Schedule Express. Schedule Express has a, a CSV file, kind of like a spreadsheet, for what line or what number should be answered, what day, and whatnot. So <clears throat> we're going to look at that a little bit later. Um, because there is a, a facility to move your Schedule Express entries over to 8.6. So in 8.6, it's actually far more simple. You have an incoming call, and of course the line numbers and, and call servers are actually still important, but what's more important in the, in the call routing is what's called a location, and that is something new with 8.6. You, you assign that to a switch section. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with how our, our integration works, you have a PBX system that you're, that you're integrated with with a CXE system. Um, that PBX generally has what's called a switch section, and a switch section is roughly like a node. It's so that you can have, say, one manufacturer, say PBX, and multiple nodes and still route them through the CXE system. So what they did is they added a location here. <clears throat> and the location is basically a, a name that you give a particular integration. Like um, if you have multiple PBX systems in, say, a campus, then you would put the name of where, I guess, wherever each PBX was. Now, what they did is we're putting a new call routing table, and <clears throat> you can put in the number you want to have routed, have it apply to a location or all locations, and then you get a choice based on um, what else you want to do. Now, you can route it right to a call processor, like you used to do, or you can route it to something that's new and fancy for 8.60 called a scheduled mailbox. Um, the scheduled mailbox can then assign it to a call processor based on date and time. One of the kind of cool things that was added along with the scheduled mailboxes is greatly enhanced override functionality. And we're going to take a little look at that as well. The older version 8 systems, you could override the answer mode table, um, <clears throat> but you couldn't, unless you were logged in as an administrator, you couldn't really manage that. Well, now not only can you manage that like you used to from the administration utility, you can also manage it per scheduled mailbox, and you can manage those overrides either by the administration utility, by a mobile application, if you install it on your system, or by calling in and logging into the Schedule Mailbox. So let's take a look at a Schedule Mailbox. <coughs> I have one of them here. And what you'll see is on the main screen, you'll have, of course, the mailbox number and the display. The display name is something that should be meaningful so that you understand uh, what this schedule does or what it's assigned to. You'll see a security code. It's one of the only mailboxes that actually has one. The security code is um, you set it on the screen. This is what's used to log into this mailbox if you want to change or override or manually override this schedule. If you don't put in a security code, then you cannot log into the schedule mailbox. Now, you don't have to be an administrator to do this. You just need to have the password to the mailbox. Um, a language, of course, and then the location. Um, which location does this schedule belong to? I have two locations in my system here. And you also see some notes. You have a note field here that you can type in and the other pertinent information that's useful to, to the schedule. Now, this is really cool what you see here. Um, when you do an upgrade from version 8.5 to 8.6, um, what you'll see when you con it's going to convert your old style routing to the new style routing. It's going to create schedule mailboxes, do all your call routing for you, and it's also going to put in notes saying how this happened. So you'll see conversion auto-generated um, this date and time from the answer mode. Um, <clears throat> that's basically a note that the upgrade process put in there to tell you what happened. So the meat and taters, or the, the business end of this mailbox, is called the weekly schedule. And you'll see it here. Um, it's just time down the left-hand side, days all the way to the right, or across the top. And you can see here, you can change the resolution um, to be a little bit more granular uh, if you're going to have a more finely um, defined type schedule. You also have a test facility here that you can pick the date and time and then hit test. 
and see uh, which processor or which greeting is going to play for any given date and time. This is so uh, it makes it easier to, to kind of troubleshoot things. Now, to assign this, it's actually pretty graphical. Um, what I normally do is I'll define everything as night first, and then go back and define what is day. So you really just click on the navigation button here, um, pick in, pick one of the uh, mailboxes, and just simply hold down the mouse and drag it through the whole screen. And that immediately changes all the entries um, in whatever row of blocks um, that you've selected with your mouse held down. So what I normally do is I'll define night. And then I'll go back and say Monday through Friday, I'll click on this and put in the day menu. And just hold down the mouse and drag it over to the date and times that I want that menu to play. And that's pretty much all you have to do to do a schedule. Now you can make this um, at any given period of time, you can change the processor that you want to have answer here as well. There's another tab called ESP settings, and this is kind of a, a, a feature that was in the old answer mode table. Um, there was just two little check boxes there. Um, here, uh, it's separated, of course, by hour. And what you'll see is a subscriber ESP or non-subscriber ESP. What this does is, do, basically, do I want to allow subscriber ESP or non-subscriber ESP, which is extension-specific processing, do I want that to be used or processed during these time entries? Now, subscriber ESP would be if I had a mailbox and I had a call processor attached to my mailbox and I wanted that, the instructions in that call processor to run instead of my subscriber features. A subscriber ESP would be if my phone here was forwarded to CX um, and I was running ESP. A non-subscriber ESP would be something along the lines of you're in an automated attendant and you press a key to leave a message for somebody or go to their voicemail. Well, the subscriber message function basically emulates a forwarded call, but it's not a, a, a subscriber-based action. Um, so, and that's basically saying here to to kind of sum it up, do I want ESP to work during these hours for a call to a subscriber, or do I want to have it work during the automated attendant? And there are many reasons that you could choose to turn that off during a certain period of time. Um, typically, we're going to see it in something like a, um, a inclement weather or a holiday type menu. If you have uh, more sophisticated routing happening within your departmental type automated attendant, you may not want to have calls be routed that way when it's a holiday and nobody's around. Um, that's basically what that feature is for. So after that, we have overrides, schedule overrides, and manual overrides. We're going to come back and take a peek at them in a little bit. But this is a schedule mailbox. And there's a couple of different places. Oh, by the way, you know, this at the bottom. Um, you have different stuff for um, the different languages as well. Almost every mailbox, actually every mailbox in a CX system is multilingual. You can have different speech languages and you can have different prompt languages uh, depending on what you're licensed to have. <clears throat> so where this comes together is under configuration system. Gone is the answer mode table and then there is a call routing table here but it's been changed. It looks a little bit different than the old one. And so on the left hand side you'll have what type of call am I expecting? And by default, you'll have something called a default answer, which means it does, it's ignoring any kind of integration information it gets. If I get a call, play this greeting um, or play this schedule. The other ones here I have set up are phantom extensions. And a phantom extension is basically an extension that you that doesn't really exist in the hardware. There's no phone for it, but you programmed it in the PBX and you forward it all the time to CX. Um, that's a phantom extension. But if you drop it down, you'll see your other choices, genus digits or trunk group or trunk number. Now, again, um, not every integration supports this information going to the CX system. Many of them do. Um, if it doesn't, then those things won't do anything for you, obviously. So you put in the service number. Um, this is the extension or the directory number that I want to have answered. 
which location, I can say every location, either my main building or my annex building, which is really my same, same building here, but um, pick a location, and then for subscriber calls, non-subscriber calls, what do I want to have happen? And I can pick a schedule, or I can pick a call processor mailbox at this point. And then I have allow subscriber login over here. Um, this basically controls the subscriber login function if you have, say, a phantom extension that actually has a telephone. If you call this number or call into CX, do I look at that and try to log you in, or do I ignore it and go play the automated attendant? That type of thing. I usually keep these things unchecked. Um, just as a matter of course. And of course, you have a comment. Um, you'll see here for an upgrade on the auto generated date and time. You'll also see SX auto. This is what happens when we convert Schedule Express over to the new call routing, which we're going to look at in a bit. So we have the overrides or control manual overrides up here. We're going to look at that in a second. Um, the locations, by the way, are what defined in this locations tab. Typically, what these things apply to let me get out of this is over here in the main server. I'm, at, I'm on a combined system and call server here. They refer to a location here. So what you do is you set them up in the administration utility, and then you come back here and you drop down and select which one that you want for your PBX. Now, when you install CX for the first time, it's going to ask you when you put in a PBX, um, what location would you like to define? It's the only time that that happens in, a, in an installation type environment. Typically, it's done right here. And you can edit these and put in whatever notes that you want to describe what this building is or what this integration is. You can select a time zone for it and whatnot. So that's pretty simple. I mean, you, you basically just put in the routing, what number you want to route, what schedule you want to go to, um, and then it starts routing the calls. Now, the other part of this that's really kind of cool, I'm going to take a, a little digression here, is on a, a call processor mailbox, I have a brand new feature. Um, it's called go to schedule. So I can say go to schedule and then select a scheduled mailbox or put in a scheduled mailbox. And then when that subscriber or that caller presses that key, they go to the schedule or says a word. Um, this can happen with speech as well. So what this allows you to do is if you have something like uh, a tech support or a help desk or um, different departments, and they have different times that they are in operation. Your main automated attendant, you press the key, say the word to go to that department, it checks the schedule and then does what they would want to do or want to have happen if it was a direct call. So it's a really kind of cool feature. Um, you can do this, again, with Schedule Express as well, so that's why they put this, this functionality in here. So overrides. We um, put back a ton of different ways to do overrides. And you have two different, two basically different ways to do this. You have system overrides, or scheduled overrides better, or better way to put it. And then you have manual overrides. Now, the, the trick is you can't have a manual override, or you cannot create a manual override on the fly. So I can't call into a scheduled mailbox and manually override it unless I have that override already pre-configured. Um, just like a schedule override, they have to be defined before you can switch to them. So um, we have a bunch of different holidays here. And a schedule override, that's pretty much what a holiday is, is used for. Um, let me pick November or pick uh, Thanksgiving here. Any one of these entries, you can add an entry, delete, edit. Um, you have a myriad of different selections here for whatever scheduled holiday you want to be. A weekday of each year, a day of each month if it's recurring, a weekday of each month, um, the day, date. Uh, you can also have a floating type holiday if this happens on a Saturday. Actually, I did that with Christmas. 
think. If it occurs on a Saturday, move it to the previous Friday. If it occurs on a Sunday, move it to the following Monday, that type of thing. Um, I can put in a date of range or a range of dates, whatnot, to, to define what this schedule override is. So it's greatly enhanced type um, holiday routing, because those holidays back on the previous version of the system were all the entries in an answer mode table. So just because I did it here, though, doesn't mean it can be um, it's um, already in operation. What I did here is just set up the days and times that I want to have an override. Uh, there's a button down here, by the way, also uh, list usage. I can see which ones belong to uh, which mailboxes are being are using this actual override. So we'll go to our main schedule for now. And under the Schedule Overrides tab, I have all my different um, holidays here. And you can see, um, I just simply select during Christmas, what do I want to play? Um, I probably could click on this. And put it out throughout the whole day. If I have an extra day, uh, on either side of the holiday that we that you want to have to stay in holiday mode, um, you can do that as well. It's especially useful with Thanksgiving when a lot of people get the original or the, the Thursday off as well. So there you just highlight it and select the, the period of time that you want that greeting to play. And again, you have your ESP settings. Do I want ESP to work? And I could say something like, no, I don't want any ESP working when I'm on holiday. Everybody should be playing the holiday greeting. That's really all there is to these things. Um, manual overrides are a little bit different. So I can configure these, a manual override, to be available throughout the system. Or I can have one for specific um, schedule mailboxes. So here I have a couple of um, a couple of uh, entries here, one for inclement weather, the other one for uh, meetings I think I used. This should look very familiar if you're used to, to administering a version 8 system. It looks very much like a speech type command prompt and that's exactly what it is. And that's kind of a clue too because when you log into a subscriber or a schedule mailbox to be able to change your override for that schedule, you can do it with speech. So it will ask you which override you want to use. You can say inclement weather or whatever you want to say, uh, whatever you've programmed here to have that override come into effect. So by programming or set up the more uh, generic ones that you might need here in the system, then when I go to my mailboxes, I can then, I have those available for me to use. So um, we could take it off following the default schedule and say, pick like inclement weather. We're working due to a reduced staff or something like that. Please be patient with us or something like that. Um, I can create another one here that's specific just to this mailbox or just specific to this department. here, I changed over to private. This only works in this mailbox. So then I can just select which, um, which greeting or which call processor I want to answer during that particular time. So it's actually very simple to set these things up. And like I said before, if this one does not have its login set, uh, if I set one, give it a password, I can now log into this mailbox and change to any one of the overrides or any one of the manual overrides that I've previously configured. Oops, say okay. Now 
about trigger these, we of course have um, the web interface. We also have under system control manual overrides. I can say specific schedule mailbox, like my salesman that I just did. OK. Set. Team building event. And then that mailbox, once I hit apply, that mailbox is now overridden. So to clear it, I can just simply come back to here, say clear. Clear it. And that's really all there is to it. Um, you can also use a browser to do this as well. I actually have that set up on my web uh, my web uh, section here. Got what I call it. I think it's called mobile admin. Oh, of course. <sighs> I have no clue what it is. Um, I'll look at that later during questions. But anyway, there's a web utility that you can install to do or to uh, use a smartphone or something like that to change your, your schedules override, as well as calling in and doing it here. Now, this functionality, or all this schedule functionality, was made to uh, basically take over what used to be done with Schedule Express. Now, in Schedule Express, what you'll see is a call processor, and this is one that can handle all of the Schedule Expresses. I've just used uh, some wild cards here. You could put in an extension number here as well. So you'll have a, a mailbox like this that routes to Schedule Express, sends the call, or sends the, the call information, and then it's looked up on a schedule. And typically, to make this happen, um, you would use a subscriber mailbox to route that call. So let me see where this one is. Yeah, HR routing. So on the answering tab, you would have active, you have it assigned to that call processor. So calls that came into this mailbox, 3015, would now be sent to that mailbox. Schedule Express would look at it and then assign it to the proper call processor. So in order to do that, you of course have a schedule. So those are found in the CXSX directory. You'll have something like this, uh, CX dot, or SX dot CSV. And it's basically the numbers, um, what extensions coming in, what digits I want to go out, and then the schedule itself. And that's kind of a clue here. You could just simply create a schedule mailbox, um, like for right here. This one uh, section here, I could put in my schedule, under my schedule, and I could put in these holidays or the non-schedule items as over, as overrides. Um, and then just simply reassign that, that digit over to the call routing table. It's actually a pretty simple process. If you have way more than, um, than a handful of these things, though, it can get kind of tedious, and a lot of really large companies have that, have that challenge. So to make that a lot easier, we created a utility to be able to just take this information from the schedule and build all the mailboxes for you. Now, in order to use it, it's wisest to copy the schedule and put it someplace else. I'll throw it in my documents here. And then use that as a working copy instead of using your live copy. Because um, obviously, if a system's in production, you don't want to be messing with the schedule um, while calls are happening. So. Work, have a working copy here. If you have multiple schedules on different call processors, you can combine them into one big schedule file here. Uh, the next step, of course, you'll see here I've done an archive, a mailbox archive of all your uh, 
routing mailboxes and all your call processors is a wise move. Because once you use this utility, um, what the changes are going to happen live. Uh, they're going to be instantly changed. Now, you can change them back, but you can't change them back by clicking a mouse or hitting undo. You have to go back and find them. So have a backup before you start so you can put the mailboxes back the way they were. So to do this, on the mailbox, there's an uh, entry called Import Schedule Express Data. It's going to give you a warning. You know, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to bail out of this if, if you're not liking what you're seeing. Um, and it's not reversible, but I would probably give that a caveat. It's not reversible by a mouse click or an undo. It's reversible by a lot of work. And if you have a really big schedule, um, it, can be, it can be a lot of work. So it's looking for the sx.csv file. I have mine in my documents. That's something you want to pay attention to, by the way, because it may default over to the CXSX, the production folder. Um, so you want to be kind of careful when, you, when you're selecting that. OK. So telling you here, I'm imported the data into my little tool. I'm going to use, I detected that this was installed in the United States, so I'm going to use, say, United States holidays. Um, I have a value here that are referenced by a call processor action, but not defined in the CSV file. And it's telling me right here, mailbox 2999 doesn't exist in that schedule. So first problem right away. Now, that's not going to be service affecting whatsoever. What's going to happen is um, there will be no entries for it. That's what it's telling you. So we have a couple of things going on here. Um, to say unknown invalid line um, for it does not like this one entry for Saturday under 3015 and see that's one of the first flags so I can I can leave out of this yeah go ahead go back to my file it didn't like Saturday I'll just wipe it out. It's a test thing. You would fix the file, basically. Then come back. And re-import it so it's more clean. Now, it's not going to import a problem. You can actually tell it to exclude stuff as well. Same problem I had because I didn't fix that one extension. Man, I still saw that. Must have got rid of the wrong one. Doesn't make any sense. It's the third entry down. Do I? Yeah, I got it. So the point here is um, it's going to prevent you or tell you that something bad is about to happen. So give you a chance to fix it. This is why you use a separate file. looks a lot better. So if this all looks good, and you see I can change my, um, my, my view down here. If this all looks good and you're happy with the schedule mailbox and the schedule, uh, the number of the mailbox, you can say commit. Now just because I've committed, that means I'm just okay with what it's going to do. I haven't told the system to do anything yet. So at this point, I can double click here and then I can alter 
those scheduled mailboxes that are going to be created, they're not done yet. It's just telling me what it's going to do. So I have an opportunity to fix them up. And then I can say, of all the different um, holidays, do I want to put in, um, I can put in new holidays if I want or um, exclude them. So if I'm happy with this, um, I'll just exclude that one too. Just hit finish. It's going to tell you what it's going to find, um, what it's going to do. you also be able to look at this when you're done. And it will go through, it will build all the mailboxes, the schedules, it will put the entries in the routing table, and then it will take your Schedule Express routing mailbox, and then it will alter that so that it's no longer being used. So that's one of the reasons you want to be careful when you get started here. So see, my call routing mailbox, it basically wiped out the Schedule Express entry. And then under routing, you should see our new stuff these two are new, going to our new schedules, and it's already done. Um, there's a file here. If I go back to my documents, there'll be a new log file that tells me what was done in case I want to go back and, and, and find stuff. It'll say here, subscriber mailbox was using ESB, ESP, but it is no longer probably needed because there's nothing, basically had nothing in the schedule. So it's telling you, you know, stuff to clean up. Then you can go back and you can clean up the subscriber mailboxes if you wanted. So one of the questions last week, because now's a good time to ask them, by the way, is when you convert from, from an earlier version of CX to 8.6, it just converts everything for you and, and leaves Schedule Express the way it is. So if you have a ton of, of scheduling going through Schedule Express, it leaves that, and Schedule Express continues to function perfectly fine until you're happy with the, the system and have time to then convert them, either by doing a, a Schedule Express import or by doing it manually. Um, changing away from Schedule Express doesn't happen during the main upgrade. So I think uh, with that, let's, uh, let's see what kind of questions we have, if any. Okay. So, Pat, while people are typing in their questions, there's just a couple of things that I'll add. Um, so the f first thing I want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, comment on is um, one of the primary reasons that we added location into the mix of this was just to help um, people so that they could override their attendance um, more quickly. So people that will have multiple auto attendants for various different departments, they'll have the ability to um, override them all as a group or individually, um, so they could do it. Um, when they go in to do an, an override, they'll be able to pick a specific schedule mailbox to do an override for. So if they only want to override a specific um, departmental one, so for example, your uh, team meeting example is a, is, a, is a good one for that. So that, team, that department is going to have a team meeting. They can override just that one. Or if it's more of an inclement weather type thing, then they can override all the um, schedules for a particular location. So for example, AVST has an office in um, Southern California and an office um, where I am up here in Seattle. And uh, sometimes we get snow up here, whereas they rarely get snow down in Southern California. So sometimes we need to be able to override the auto attendants that, that, that are you know, basically served out of the Seattle office and we're able to do all those in one fell swoop just by choosing the location. Or we can do all, all, out, all other attendance at the same time by just choosing all locations. So that's one thing that allows, um, uh, that, that we've added to the system in 8.6 to make doing those types of overrides a lot, a lot simpler. The other thing I wanted to mention about this, Pat, could you go into, can you pull up a subscriber mailbox? And then go to the recordings tab. So on the recordings tab, there's a new permission here called Control Manual Overrides. And what this does is it allows you to um, give override permission to a particular subscriber. And then if, if the subscriber has this permission, then they can log on to their mailbox if they're using <coughs> excuse me, the original TUI as their TUI type. They'll be able to log on to their mailbox and go into the hidden administrator menu by pressing 4. 
from the main menu. And there will be an option there where they can then um, override uh, schedules for the system and they can walk through. So they don't necessarily need a, to assign a password to the scheduled mailbox for an administrator to accomplish this. Um, if you give somebody this permission, then they can do it for any scheduled mailbox in the system, whereas if you set a password on the scheduled mailbox itself, that, that's basically giving people the ability to allocate um, to the department themselves the ability to override their own, um, their own schedule. So when that team meeting rolls around and they need to shut down for the afternoon, the department would be able to go in and override their, their schedule themselves versus having to call an administrator to do that. But here it gives you the ability to have, um, to allocate uh, the override functionality to, to, the, uh, to a subscriber who would then serve as a, a, an administrator for any uh, scheduled mailbox in the system. So I just wanted to kind of add those, those two things. And then, um, so let's uh, see what kind of questions we have. Anne? Okay. Yeah, there's several questions coming in. If you um, haven't submitted a question you still would like to, um, you may have it minimized. Use that orange arrow at the top right corner, and then once that's expanded, you'll see the question box toward the bottom. First question, Pat, we work on a 980 schedule, so every other Friday we are closed. Would we have to enter all the closed Friday dates in the schedule override section? Well, that's actually a schedule, right. Um, uh, but that, maybe it's that would be Friday. that would actually be a challenge. But it would be um, we don't have every other Friday. Yeah. So currently, the scheduling is all it's a weekly schedule. Um, we, we are talking about um, enhancing it to um, be able to support a biweekly schedule in the future, but at this point we're, we're, we're basically doing it just one week at a time. So yeah, you'd have to, currently you'd have to do that via exceptions. Uh, so a recurring every other week type, you know, uh, you know, using the schedule overrides. Or a manual override. Right. Okay. Uh, next question: Will the admin application be web-based anytime soon? Uh, that would be a question for me as well. So that's actually <laughs> when I kick things off. That's one of the things we're going to be looking for customer input on here before too long. We're actually in the process of um, doing the design and whatnot for um, converting the administration stuff over over to web-based. And here, probably within the next, I don't know, four to six weeks or something, I'll be um, posting a message to the forum looking for um, people who want to um, participate in the design process and provide feedbacks on the mock-ups and the proposals that we've put together for that. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Um, question is the current release of CX 8.6. Do you want to clarify that? It's yeah, eight point six is the current release. Update one. Yes. Okay. Um, there's also a question in here about what additional training webinars, whether we will have those. And our goal with this program, the ABSC Academy webinars, is to do these once a quarter. And we're actually very open to your suggestions on topics that you would like us to cover. So I will actually plan. I'll do a quick email survey once we finish up here today. And um, there will be a place there if you want to fill that in to give us your suggestions on topics. And so, you know, if we do these once a quarter, it'll probably be two to three months before we do another one. But again, we'd love to hear from you as far as what you would like us to cover. So look for that later today. Um, next question. Let's see. Well, actually, the, with the, oh, go ahead, Pat. With the training, um, we're actually redoing our entire site. Um, so. There will be other web stuff tied in. It, 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 one of the things the new site allows us to do is do blended training. So what we'll probably do is come up with classes that have a mixture of web-based, uh, e-learning web-based, and maybe even live. So it, it, it completely opens up a ton of different possibilities for us. But it's, it's coming, but it's not ready to unleash yet. OK, great. Thanks, Pat. Um, next question here, is the ESP removed in the subscriber mailbox if it's set to sx.exe? No, the subscriber mailbox, um, 
it pretty much left alone. Uh, let me see. Here's the one that, that one of the ones that converted. It pretty much left that the way it was. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to go quickly back to, to um, revert back to Schedule Express, all you would simply have to do is fix the Schedule Express routing mailbox and um, take that entry out of the routing table, and then it would go back to using Schedule Express. Okay, and then the Schedule Express needs to be set up on each call server? Yes. Okay. That's what's nice about this release is you don't need that anymore. Okay, and then follow-on question again. So how long will Schedule Express be supported now that the scheduling feature is available? So I'll take that one, Pat. Um, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to let um, you guys decide how long we'll keep Schedule Express around. Basically, we'll, um, uh, we, we will continue to offer it in the short term. And um, you know, it will basically be based on sales. If, if, um, if people prefer to use Schedule Express, I uh, will continue to sell it, um, but we expect that sales will drop off um, dramatically. And then um, here, you know, we'll, we'll we'll evaluate sales in about a year from now. And if if sales would basically stop, then then we'll we'll discontinue that product. But for anybody that has it, it we we have no intention of <clears throat> removing the functionality that allows Schedule Express to work. So if you have it now and you like it and you're happy with it. Um, that that should continue to work just fine as the way it does now uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay, next question. Do we need to manually update the holidays at the beginning of each year, or will the schedule automatically update according to the new calendar? It depends on how you set them up. So if you said December 25th is the, like, Christmas or New Year's Day, no, you're not going to have to do that. It's not year-based. Um, and if you say whatever day of whatever week or whatever month, like for Thanksgiving is the third or fourth Thursday, I think, of November, that stays the fourth Thursday of November. So unless you've actually given a date and that date changes, like say Memorial Day or, or President's Day, one of the ones that kind of floats around, um, yeah, those ones you probably have to redo, but but anything else, the biggies that are the same date or the same um, day of the month, the particular month or something like that now. Right, and to make that easier, that's why we moved the, um, the holiday, the schedule override management for holidays and whatnot to be more centralized so that rather than having to change it, you know, 15 times over, if you had 15 different... Um, Departmental auto attendance, you only have to change it once in the in the central um, uh, in the you know system configuration, and then that would then apply to all the all the department ones that are using the system one. Okay, next question: Will all the schedules appear in the system config tab after Schedule Express is converted? Can you um, have a question once more? Will all the schedules appear? You know what? Yeah. I just clicked it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see the question anymore. That was a bad idea. Well, what you Sorry. what you'll see is new schedule mailboxes, um, and then you'll see those entries in the main system routing table. Um, so you'll basically see them. What was converted? If there were overrides that were created, you'll see them here. Um, I had one of them because it was called something different. It created, uh, if something's different than the schedule, it's going to create a different one or another entry. Because you see here, one's called Christmas, one's called Christmas Day. That's different. Um, Memorial Day, and but I had it as May 25th, a date, and then I had it as last Monday in May. The system actually knows, the conversion process actually knows all the holidays. And so the ones that were done by the conversion are probably correct. So yeah, you'll see you'll see all the new stuff in there. Okay. Um, how would you record a name for a manual override? You don't really need to do that. Um, 
but you could, I guess. Um, under one of these here, I mean, you call it what it is, um, and you can import a name, a spoken name, so you'd record that with something like Audacity or uh, Windows Recorder or something like that. You could import it as the actual name. Um, but if you have speech, it already knows what that is. It knows what inclement weather is, and it's going to say inclement weather. So right, it'll use text to speech for that if text to speech is available on the system. Right, which is a lot, a lot easier. You don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, if you don't import a, re a name recording and you don't have text to speech on the system, then it won't, then it won't present that as a as an item to be selected and when you're using the um, the telephone uh, the DTMF for the speech interface. Okay, next question. We operate as a service bureau for approximately 130 auto attendants. How would this benefit us? Can we utilize override per an application? Well, yeah, because each one of those, each one of those auto attendants would have its own schedule. I'm imagining. So, I mean, you could use, put, you could just reuse the the common holidays as scheduled overrides, um, and then put your own overrides in the scheduled mailbox itself. Okay. And there's a follow-up okay. question, which I... Oh, go ahead, Matt. So let me just add on to what Pat said. So um, I, I expect that this would be especially beneficial to somebody that has so many different auto attendants um, for a number of different reasons. First, uh, I mean, if you have that many auto attendants, you probably have a large number of um, call servers as well where you're having to update these the schedule express CSV files on each one of those. And, and um, as many of you probably know, schedule express was very sensitive to typos and, and, and whatnot. In fact, um, Pat, the reason why you're having a little difficulty with the, um, the import there of the file was, was due to a typo where the column title was supposed to be days instead of day, as uh, I guess as some of our customers pointed out. Um, so Schedule Express was very sensitive to that, and so when you updated one of those Schedule Express files on one of the call servers, if you had a typo or whatever, that adversely affected all auto attendants in the system, or could potentially do so. So here, this allows you to get away from that paradigm completely, and you can manage each schedule on a more of an independent basis without, and if you make a mistake in one schedule, it's not going to have any adverse effect on the others, for the most part. Um, obviously, the holiday stuff can be centrally managed or it can be managed on a per-schedule um, mailbox basis. If you're centrally managing that and make a mistake there, yeah, it could potentially um, affect the others as well, but I mean, we're not, we don't expect people are, are, uh, are making too many mistakes around that. So yeah, I think it's going to have great benefit for anybody that has a large number of um, auto attendants that they manage. It was certainly okay. that was our intent. Another question, if different departments have different hours on Christmas, is that adjustable per department if you have one holiday called Christmas? Yes, because you have to go into the um, mailbox itself to tell it when to play the different greetings. So the, the holiday itself is can be a system, the event, the holiday can be in the system, but then what you do with it happens in the schedule. Right, so you manage the rule centrally, but you manage, you know, what actually happens on the holiday per schedule mailbox. Okay, so it looks like that actually wraps up the questions unless someone's still typing. Um, and I'd also like to just thank Matt and Pat both for uh, putting together the content for this, and um, just thanks for to everyone who has taken the time out of their day, and hopefully uh, this was beneficial to you and you learned quite a bit. So, so thanks again for joining, and we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. To learn more about AVST, please visit www.avst.com.